Hello everyone, uh, welcome to Imprint and today we're looking at a new topic and that is reading comprehension for aptitude exams. The thing is that in uh, various exams, whether it's GMAT, whether it's CAT, uh, whether it's SSC or whether it's banking, whether even it's a uh, basic uh, placement test, reading comprehension perhaps uh, is very, very important and a lot of people have uh, trouble solving them. So in this uh, video, we're going to talk about how, uh, which strategies to use and what are the typical problems we face in reading comprehensions. The first thing I think we should focus upon is uh, what are the challenges of reading comprehension. Now, uh, the first challenge obviously is uh, the content. Uh, the content is demanding. Uh, the passage focuses on specific and unfamiliar topics sometimes. So, you know, when you practice for the GMAT or for CAT or for various exams, whether it's even CSAT for UPSC. The idea is that uh, the topics, uh, you know, obviously are from geology, from chemistry, sometimes biology, sometimes the question, uh, there's a passage on DNA, there's a passage on geography, there's a passage on plate tectonics for that matter. So the problem becomes is that uh, it's unfamiliar topics. So the first question is, uh, what should I do about that? So the first, I think uh, if you have enough time, how uh, to prepare let's say you have given yourself enough time so i said there's a quality and a time frame both you should you know give yourself uh while preparing for the cat or the gmat i would ex expect that you guys are very well read uh you should be able to read uh, a couple of books a month and so on uh but so uh, you know a lot of people are not able to do that what about those so for them i normally suggest if you can go through the newspaper and a magazine uh that would be useful now the question is, uh, why is that important? The, prob the thing is, there are a lot of unfamiliar words. So this is the challenge. There are a lot of unfamiliar words, right, which we ha might not have seen, right? So the, now the problem becomes is that, you know, how do I comprehend, comprehend something which I don't understand? The key lies in obviously trying to go for the passage above, below, right, the few lines above and below, and trying to make sense out of it, okay, right? and there will be times when you will not understand but sometimes uh you know you know we are lucky and those things are not asked in the passage right so that is it the other issues uh that we face is uh, we have to read on screen uh, that's for the gmat and cat now in other exams uh we have a hard copy so the problem becomes is that uh, on screen reading is not for everybody you might not be used to it uh so that is one challenge especially people from the older generation they might not be used to uh, you know, reading on screen. Uh, it requires a different type of a mindset. Uh, remember, the GMAT or, or the CAT is a long exam, especially a GMAT is a long exam, you'll be tired. So hence, uh, you know, there is an issue. Then uh, for GMAT specifically, you cannot preview all the questions. So you can only look at a question after you answer one. So if you get a tough question, you still have to answer that. So that's a huge, huge challenge. Uh, then the next challenge, obviously, is uh, you have to read quickly. Now, the problem with this is how quick is enough? Um, now, a lot of you might not have even gauged your reading speed. So for that, I normally suggest that, you know, there's a book by Norman Lewis, How to Read Faster. I would suggest all of you to read that, go through that book. Uh, or just check your reading speed by picking up an article from a newspaper, post, putting it on a, a Word document and then reading in, in using a stopwatch. Uh, that is one. Uh, the other uh, thing which I normally tell uh, most of my students is that, uh, take a passage, try to read the questions and the passage, uh, right, and look, clock yourself. Then uh, try to read the passage again. Check whether the time taken for the first go of reading the passage uh, and the second go, what is the ratio between them? If the ratio is obviously half, all right, so first time you're taking, let's say, five minutes and then you're taking two and a half, so then it's good because then your comprehension ability, you feel that it is good. On the other hand, if you're not able to comprehend in the first go, you would approximately take the same amount of time the second time. Okay, so hence uh, your reading speed or revision speed in the second go has to be very, very high. Okay, uh, then, uh, you, know, I, you know, when we were starting uh, about uh, reading comprehension, I talked to a few of my seniors. So uh, there is Atul sir uh, uh, from Bullseye, and he, uh, you know, uh, is very very senior to me from i'm calcutta as well so i asked him so you know what is the challenges so he says you have to comprehend at the same time okay uh you have to understand the passage 
at the same time so it's not just reading so you know it is not casual reading right the key is to uh, read and comprehend at the same time yep and you should have presence of mind and alertness uh, and we'll talk about that uh, how they are going to be used uh, in the coming slides but the idea is i have to understand at the same time i'm reading okay and obviously that takes a lot of time right takes a lot of practice you know obviously uh, i normally give a target uh, for gmat to my students like you know before you even try to gauge whether you're doing things correctly or incorrectly you have to solve 100 passages right and that's very very important um, to my indian engineers right uh, i would say that uh, the thing is that you might think uh, you are weak in uh, reading comprehension and strong in maths that is not true the fact is that you have solved more than 20000 questions in quant and that's the only reason you think you are good at it on the other hand you have not solved 20 20000 questions in reading comprehension so first get to that level that you are in that you know like 7 8000 questions of reading comprehension and then you can say whether you're good or not okay uh, now what are the different different strategies we talk about in reading comprehension in the first extreme is the becoming a hunter so this is uh, you know in long passages uh, and this was especially done uh, for fms right uh, this is a college in india for those, those, those of you who don't know right uh, so these two have very very long passages and uh, you know you have to become a hunter so avoid in this what we do we avoid the first read altogether we skip the initial reading and move directly to questions and then you go hunting for answers in the passage so as soon as you see a long passage this uh, hunting strategy becomes useful okay then the second extreme is that let's say you have very very short passages so become a scholar okay right Unfam so it is very useful uh, in reading unfamiliar documents like even so let's say you're reading something for upsc and you don't like a uh, subject so there uh, you know this becomes very very important so it requires a very careful first read okay and attention to detail uh, takes far too much attention and you lose sight of the big picture you're looking at your ear word call meaning can instead of trying to understand the macro okay so these two extremes are useful but only in very very specific situations okay not everywhere else now for a matter when an engineer reading a bio becoming a scholar is you know useful uh, uh you know uh, uh engineer you know solving chemistry and physics questions or right in uh, upsc uh, becoming a hunter makes sense now what is uh, what should we do the idea is uh, we need to have a middle ground as lord buddha would say right that uh, excess of everything is bad so we need to become a big picture reader the idea has to be we have to have a idea towards the structure now what does this mean so the idea is that whatever a passage is, the, a passage is nothing but a opinion piece, right? So the idea behind a passage is to give you some information. And obviously, you know, give arguments for and against. So normally what will happen in a passage, they will start with the first paragraph, will introduce the topic, right? And what are the various assumptions? then there'll be arguments for and against and then there'll be a conclusion now you have to understand the structure if you understand the structure of the passage right you should be able to comprehend uh, the, the what is the passage talking about what problem most people make they don't look at the structure okay then with the structure you can actually guess from which portions of the passage you'll have questions from okay now what does that mean it says that if you you know the normally is the standard question is what is the primary purpose of the passage uh, that we normally would get in the first two paragraphs so in the first two paragraphs you know you should get the primary purpose of the passage what is the passage all about then uh, in the middle there will be some information so in from information you'll get one direct questions okay right so there'll be a question uh, directly asked from from the middle right and at the end there has to be a question from the last two paragraphs okay so the last paragraph and the concluding well, the pre-concluding pa paragraphs last few lines they should have some information from that uh, question should come and you can actually statistically check that most passages are made this way remember as i said it's an opinion piece so it has to go in a structure okay 
Now, uh, but obviously, this is a little advanced. I think you need a few analysis to you know, believe this. Now, what we do is that let's go slowly, all right, from the beginning to grasp the basics. So first, you have to understand what the passage is talking about. So go slowly in the middle. Uh, go quickly at the end, avoiding minor details at arm's length. Then you have to read actively. So active reading is what we talk about. Your time speed. Uh, and I said, what is the basic? How do you check for active reading? The second time when you read the passage, your time has to go down very, very strongly. Now, uh, what is the goal behind all this? You have to avoid the feeling you wasted time uh, because you lost in a few words. So let's say you don't I didn't understand a few words or you skimmed over the passage or you didn't grasp the, any concept. Uh, right. Uh, this is you have to avoid. OK. So go for the structure. Uh, now, let's go for, you know, other seven principles of reading, right? Uh, now, um, so, you know, I have trouble reading. A, few, a lot of students talked about the fact that, you know, still not working out for me. Sir, you told me all this, but still not working for me. So, uh, it's it engage with the passage. Okay, have an emotional attitude towards the passage. What does this mean? Uh, even if you dislike the passage you actively load the subject you dread it so let's say there's something about economics you don't understand it or something like that pretend to like the passage that is key identify to the good guys and the bad guys in the passage love it or hate it own the passage you have to basically either enjoy it but at the end of emotions work either way love or hate it will work okay so engage with the passage okay then uh, look for the simple story okay go for the gist go for the core meaning of the passage uh, how do you uh, you know do it uh, so one is obviously can you retell the passage in let's say 10 lines or like like something like that or maybe and can you retell the passage in like uh, five words or something uh, then make a table of content right five words or less for each para right you can do that uh, jot down on the left uh, look for contained judgment. So what are the causes happening in the passage, processes happening, categories, what theory, what kind of evaluation and what kind of comparisons are they doing? Okay. The key obviously is at the same time, uh, we should not forget the twist. Now, uh, what is the twist? That is, uh, you know, a lot of people might say that's a, you know, what does this mean? So uh, the idea uh, behind a twist is a turning point. Uh, a point where there's a deviation. So whenever there's a deviation from what is already going on in the passage, a question will be asked. So you have to be very, very careful with that. Uh, then what are the other principles, right? Link it to what you know. Now, now obviously, uh, try to create some kind of, uh, you know, stereotypes. Uh, indulge its simplifications. Try to re-explain the original text to yourself. Visualize uh, what the words mean. Uh, give you know make examples uh, you mental handle etc et but the problem the trouble with this is linking it to what you already know uh, too much concretization leads to you know uh, going away and you might uh, think of something totally different now this obviously is conditions apply uh, this is best done uh, when you are very very experienced i would say initially it would lead to some trouble then uh, What's the fourth principle? Unpack the beginning. Um, you must understand the first few sentences that apply the critical content. Grasp 100% of the beginning, even if you only understand 40% of the end. Unpack like a, a academic sentence, turn it into a few simple sentences. If let's say it is a very complicated sentence, a lot of commas, etc., try to convert into a simple sentence. Link it what you have read in the previous passage. Always try to link. Okay, identify the meaning and purpose of what you're reading. Uh, relate to every uh, you know sentence uh, to the other sentences. Now, the questions you should ask yourself is: uh, Is the new sentence unexpected or surprising? Uh, does it support what was being talk talked about before? Does it answer a question or ask a question? Okay, so these things have to be. So remember. Uh, when, how do uh, you relate to it? Let's say, you know, first was engage with the passage. Then is look for the simple story. Then is link it to what you know, and then unpack the beginning. Now, link all these four together. Okay, is one uh, thing going in sequence, or is, are they totally opposite to each other? Try to ask that question. 
Uh, do not overanalyze as you read. Remember, you have to answer the questions. You, do, you don't really need to give a speech on the topic you're reading. Then um, pay attention to signals. Their paragraph breaks will happen. Uh, there are you know words like this as for regarding in reference, first, second, third, etc. Fortunately, unfortunately, apparently, you know, after all, must in conclusion. So, you know, these summing up these these places, right? Uh, they reveal, uh, you know, author's attitude. They, you know, structure the discussion, right? Uh, when you say as for, they, you have to focus your attention, etc. Now, these signal words obviously indicate relationships to previous texts. Hence, questions can be asked from this. So here, you have to be very, very careful that whenever these words are there, it is very, very possible that you will get a question from that. Uh, then uh, pick up the pace. Go faster after the first passage, right? Don't slow down. Okay, right. Hold the first jigsaw puzzle, that the first big picture in your head, and then go quick, right? Do not get lost in the detail. Do not try to master every bit of the content, okay? Pay close to the beginning of the paragraph, big surprises, big results. That is what you're supposed to go through, okay? Now, uh, what are the components, uh, right? So what is the main point of the passage? The, what is the important message of the passage? The crux, all right? All these things, there's a question which can come, right? Uh, relate to the passage's primary purpose, right? Uh, what is the conclusion? What is the argument for that, right? Then uh, what are the support background and implications? What is the background behind the point? Is there a background uh, they are talked about in the passage? So that is very important. So the question can come on the background. Then support, right, is evidence, assertions. So normally they'll ask which of the following uh, things are not given in the passage. So the is which evidence is missing. So here you have to be very careful as well. Uh, then uh, components, all right. Remember, you can always uh, read in terms of the four components. Uh, question has to be, is this the main message? If so, this is the point. Uh, is this just background information or is it something relevant? Or then is the supporting evidence for this main message in the passage? If it's so, does it support it or does it not? And then what is the implication of the main message? These uh, you can obviously read in terms of these components as well. Okay. Uh, foreshortening, uh, right? Shadowing can also help. Uh, what is the problem? What does it lead to? The resolution, right? Go for that. Like you could always you know, think like this as well. Then, then question that leads to the answer. Then observation that leads to a new idea. So this is also a way, way of structuring, I would say. This is also useful, right? How a passage is normally set up. You'll, they'll mention a problem and then they'll give a resolution. They'll give a question and they'll give an answer. They'll give observation, give various reasons, and then maybe even say that, okay, maybe the reason is incorrect. Um, what about short passages? Okay, right. So in this, recall principles of activity. You have to be efficient. Uh, when the passage is unfriendly, and this will happen especially when there's short passages, they, it will be unfriendly. Identify and write down the key elements. Uh, read the passage actively, not passively. Be very, very focused when you're going for a short passage. Take summarized notes of what uh, you know will allow you to grasp the simple story. Create a headline list if possible. Imagine you have limited uh, ink, right? Do not try to jot down everything that is being said in the passage. Identify the passage point of view and keep an eye out for big surprises. So look for those words, right? As if, etc. right? So basically, uh, these kind of words. For a second, fortunately, unfortunately, apparently, after all, in conclusion, those kind of words. Go for them. Then uh, identify the passage's main point and keep an eye for uh, surprises. 2.5 to 3 minutes to read the passage and generate notes. Allocate 60 seconds for general question and 75 seconds for a specific question. So this is going to be your target in simple terms. What about long passages? Uh, first paragraph substantially more important than the others, right? Uh, make headlines and one uh, sentence summaries for each paragraph. Do not absorb the details. Once the passage is over, identify the main point. Uh, eight minutes to stretch the passage and answer the questions to three to four, five, four minutes, right? And uh, take uh, time, more time for general uh, specific questions than general questions. Some specific questions will take more time, right? Uh, so you have to be already prepared, mentally prepared for that. Some questions will take more time. Be ready for that. Uh, so just to revise, uh, you know, the general strategies, uh, 
the gen- strategy for a general question is uh, dive into answer choices, start eliminating. So if there's a general question, right, primary purpose, main idea. If you are st- uh, you know stuck between two choices, uh, use a scoring system to assign value to each one. That is one method. Uh, what I do personally, I basically try to check out what the each of the primary purpose is saying and how are they different from each other. Right. And then I compare it with the passage, whether, OK, this is close to the passage or not. Then strategy was specific question, uh, right? Identify keywords in the passage and find them in the passage. Very straightforward. So it's like just doing a control F, which you, you not get a chance to do control F in like that. So find one or two proof sentences to defend the correct choice. Uh, then justify every word uh, right in the answer choice. Avoid extreme words, if possible, all, always, etc. Now, one of the most important things is infer as little as possible, as long as you are not told to infer. So if they've asked you to infer, then only infer. Don't infer, right? So what does that mean? Inference is based on a fact, right? What is an inference? It's a judgment based on a fact. So the fact has to be there in the passage. And on that basis, you infer. Don't infer right? totally. Like most people I know, they'll start inferring without any basis to it. And there has to be something in the passage on the basis of which you infer. Uh, obviously, you can preview the first question before you reading that can always help you out. So that was uh, basically it. Uh, then, as I've talked about, just to um, gather back, uh, look at, remember, the first two paragraphs, you'll get the primary purpose. Factual questions are in the middle. Uh, at the end of the conclusion, questions uh, will come. Last paragraph, a question has to be there. Read it carefully. Okay. Or whenever you're hunting for the answer, uh, look for these places. Right. Uh, remember, any passage is an opinion piece. The structure has to be there. It will not be chaotic. Thank you for listening. Uh, th- this is our email in case you have any questions. And my phone number is there, right, in case you want to talk to me offline. Thank you so much.